G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, it's Saturday afternoon here in Australia and we can see that there has been a bit of a bounce back. Now, has the 50 day moving average been the support that it needed to find or are we gonna follow further downside? I mean, we can have a look here on the seven days, Bitcoin was going down and then it looks like it has found a bottom and started to make its way back up. It's just whether this is gonna last or not is what we're really looking to, you know, to see. Once we get to the charts, it might uh, give us a little bit better of an indication of what may or may not happen. But we can see the market cap is back up. So again, today's the day where the Bitcoin options end. So Friday back in the States, uh, Saturday here in Australia. So was that the catalyst that just happened to marry up with the 50 day moving average uh, to now send us to the next new all time high? Or do we see some further downwards movements? It's really hard to know. Um, there is plenty of bullish news out there, though, that makes me think this, you know, it will go up. But look, I don't like to ever say that I know exactly what's going to happen, and I don't. We could go up, we could go down. I guess we're going to find out. The only thing that's going to tell us really is time. But we can have a look at the charts and some of the stories that are coming out that may sort of help us make our mind up as well. All right, market caps up. Bitcoin dominance nearly at 58% flat, so some of the... Um, altcoins are doing quite well. ETH dominance sitting around 11%. And gas prices, oh, look, way down. 89%, so under triple digits. But, you know, how long that's going to last, who knows. All right, so what we can see here, uh, up 5% in 24 hours, up a little bit in the last hour. So charts looking pretty green at the moment. The last seven days, obviously, was a bit drastic for some of the coins. But what's really pumped in 24 hours? Has anything done really well? Filecoin up 37%, so nice. Bitmax token, Holo, Arweave, Thorchain, Voyager, Curve, Solana, Sirecoin, Kasama. I mean, look, these are all 15 plus percent gains. Well, Kasama's just under. So these are pretty good gains. For me, anything over 15% in 24 hours is a good gain. Anything under is still all right. A gain is a gain, full stop. But really, 15 plus percent is good. And when you start jumping up into the, you know, third 20s and 30 percent, you're doing quite well. So we've had some good movers, which is good. All right. What about uh, losses? Has there been any big losses in the last 24 hours? No, nah, not really. Theta Network, you know, down 5 percent, but still up 50 percent for the week. You know, Quantum down 2 percent, still up 24 percent for the last seven days. So maybe... Just maybe the 50 day moving average, which happened to coincide with the uh, end of the month and the Bitcoin options running out, maybe that was the catalyst for our next leg up. I'm not 100% sure about that. Again, usually the Sunday for the last few weeks at least, we've seen a, a big sort of heavy correction. Look, even more than just the last Sunday, it's been happening uh, on a number of Sundays. The weekend retracement has been the biggest. So that's what I'm waiting for. Is Sunday going to be a bigger retracement and we make our next leg down? Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. All right, here we are. So this is the chart pattern that it's followed. It gets into this wedge, breaks out, gets into a wedge, breaks out. Now we are in a, this isn't so much of a wedge. It's more a bit of a channel at the moment. So we can see, again, the 50-day moving average lined up almost perfectly here. It was like right on this kind of, you know, $50,000 mark. And that's where it's come down and hit. And we've bounced off that. But what we can see is this channel. So it's possible that we see something like this. Come down. Everyone thinks it's over. And then we come down. And then everyone thinks this is probably it. Yep. And then maybe we have a bit of a fake out and they think, yes, this is it before we do come down for this one more kind of low and then we start to make our way back up. This is what I'm looking for at the moment. Now I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. This is just what I'm looking for. But any breakout we have, I'm just waiting to see if it is a legitimate breakout or it's a bit of a fake out. Sort of like this. It was a breakout, but then it came back down to retest this. And we've had, uh, had other breakouts before that did break out and then just fell actually back down inside. So this is what I'm waiting for. Really, at the moment, we would need to break above. Let's just round it off. We need to get to 58,000 before I think that we've actually broken out of this descending channel at the moment. Because that's what it is. It's a channel, not a wedge. I mean, a very slight wedge. I think this is getting smaller and smaller. But I really do think at the moment we need to break above that $58,000 level. 
close above it, not just wick, and then sort of hold because it'll probably come back and retest it if it doesn't again. Do something like this where it breaks out and then simply falls back down for another low. So for me, I think we're probably going to go lower over the weekend still. So, you know, what price that is, I don't know. I get the feeling like we're going to have another sell-off come Sunday uh, before we yeah, see what happens. Because again, look, it's Friday over in the States. So that means this market has closed. So really anything that goes above $54,000, there's going to be a CME gap created. And again, you know, some people believe in the CME gap. Some people don't. The fact is, most of the time, they do close. You know, what the reasons behind that are, you know, who knows, I couldn't exactly tell you, but CME gaps generally get closed. So any gap that we maybe create over this weekend is likely a 90 plus percent chance that it will then close. So while we could maybe break to, you know, 58,000, we would then most likely come back to 54,000 Monday morning uh, and close it again before it makes its next way up. But not all the time. There is a very, very small possibility that a CME gap gets created and just doesn't get closed because there's been some that haven't been closed. But look, I wanted to move on to a couple of really interesting stories that I found. This one particularly, I love this story. So Brian Brooks, he was the officer of so the ACC, the officer of the comp controller. Uh, he's moved on. He has said something that I think is so prolific. So former OCC official says crypto has backing, but dollar may not. That was one of the big gripes that people have had. And they say that, you know, crypto isn't backed by anything uh, and the dollar is backed by something. Well, is it? Let's continue on. Brian Brooks, former acting comp control, comp, comptroller of the currency of the United States Office of the uh, Comptroller of the Currency, so that was a mouthful, has claimed that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin have some backing, while US dollar may not have any. And again, we'll go on and it'll explain this. So earlier, earlier this week, Powell argued that cryptos like Bitcoin are essentially a substitute for gold, but at the same time, they are not backed by anything. That's completely and utterly false. Well, substitute for gold, true, yes. Backed by nothing, not true. They absolutely are backed by something. Now, in response, Brooks said that there are many reasons why people have flocked to Bitcoin over the past year, including the Fed dramatically increasing the dollar supply. So when you do that, it means that the dollar is at least 40% less, uh, for at least a 40% less store, uh, good store of value than it was a year ago. So the way we can think about it is, let's say at least previously, before the pandemic, the dollar was worth something. It was, it's been going down, but since the pandemic, they've printed 25% more money, but GDP hasn't gone up, business growth and all the rest of it hasn't gone up. It's actually gone down. So you've either devalued all the money, that's the new money and the old money, or the old money is worth whatever it was worth, but all this new money, which is 25% uh, of the total amount of uh, money we've ever had, is worth nothing. So that's the way I look at it. Looking at it, that again, either all this new money is not worth anything because it's not backed by anything other than the guarantee from the government. And you know, if you compl complicitly uh, believe your government and trust in them, great. I'm not saying you know don't uh, believe in governments at all, but. Come on, who hasn't told a porky a white lie here and there, including governments? Oh, they've been every government I can think of has been caught out by their own uh, voters and that doing dodgy stuff and not acting in the best interests of the wider community. They they act in the best interests of business and themselves a lot of the time. I'm not saying they never look after their their voters. You know, they are uh, the people who live in those countries. But they, they look after themselves pretty well. So uh, this is what I really like. So the point I really want to make is the dollar may actually not be backed by anything. But cryptocurrencies actually are backed by something. And this is what people don't understand. They are backed by something. And this is what it is. They are backed by underlying networks. And what you're buying when you buy a crypto token, whatever it is, whether it's Bitcoin or anything else, you're buying a piece of a financial network built to transact in all kinds of things. That is what you're buying. And that is so true. Bitcoin, like when you get your Bitcoin, that's just, 
it's a marker for the network that you've bought into. Bitcoin, you know, the ones you hold on your ledgers or whether you're holding them uh, on a cold wallet or a hot wallet or in a uh, in an exchange, it's just a representation of the network. You have bought a piece of the network and so it is backed by something. And particularly if there's millions of people out there buying up these coins, it's being used. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they're all going to be around forever and some of them may not and I never provide financial advice, but that's what you're buying into. You're buying a representation, a small piece of that network. And if you think that network is going to be here to stay and is going to have something to do with, you know, in, with the future, whether it's the Bitcoin network, the Ethereum, Cardano, whatever it is, you know, Engine, there's a whole stack of networks out there. That is what you're buying into. You're buying into that, the framework just the coin you have, it's a representation of the piece of that framework. I love this. I love what he said. I'm devastated that he's uh, no longer the OCC, but look, the new guy, Gary Gensler, seems to be doing pretty well. So, yeah, but I, I love this. And I, th this is the best way I think it's ever been described. And as soon as I heard it, uh, or I read it, I should say, I just thought, oh, that is a great way of explaining it because it was so hard to explain to people. They're like, but this coin you know this bitcoin that i've got it's not even real and it's like yeah i get it's not real and it's not separate from the network it literally is a representation of the network it's that piece of the network that you own but it's it's not separate from it it's part of it so oh love this stuff i think this is this is what we need to get out there to people to newcomers who just simply don't understand it they need to hear something like that. I think that will really demonstrate perfectly exactly what it is that you're buying. You're not buying a coin or a fake coin. You are buying part of a network, part of a, you know, it's like buying part of sort of Microsoft and Google and things like that. But they can't just keep printing new shares and new shares and new shares. They're, they're, they're capped. There is 21 million Bitcoin. That's it. Ethereum uh, isn't capped but they are moving on to EIP 1559 and things like that. And so I'm not sure exactly what the uh, total will be and it'll probably slightly increase at times when it needs to and slightly decrease in other times when it doesn't need to. So it will still be kind of capped. So that is what you're buying into. All right, Bitcoin firms. So they team up to launch clean energy mining. So DMG Solutions and Argo Blockchain are teaming up to launch a Bitcoin mining pool to run on hydroelectric resources. So they're aiming to mint the first ever green Bitcoin, completely green, where it's used only green energy. So this is the future, I think. This is really where it'll go because one of the main criticisms of Bitcoin is that you know it takes a lot of energy to create Bitcoin. Well, if we can move to green energy, then what does it matter how much energy it uses? As long as it's made from green energy and as long as there's still enough energy to go around for everyone else to use, obviously. All right, NFTs. Oh, this was this really made me think. So Crypto Mum or Hester Pierce has said that investors should be careful not to create unregistered securities when buying and selling fractional shares in an FT, NFT. So if you own an NFT, uh, it's it's not a security, but if you start to sell off just bits and pieces of an NFT, that could be a security. So that is very, very interesting. I don't, th at least as far as I know, I haven't heard of anyone selling off pieces of an NFT, but it's likely something that someone probably would have decided to try to do in the future. Be very, very careful. You might be buying it into an unregistered security when you do so. And likewise, you may be selling unregistered securities uh, if you decide to try and split up an NFT and sell shares in it. All right, Italian crypto uh, copyright agency selects Algorand, excuse me, to create over 4 million NFTs to represent author rights. So this is big for Algorand. The non-fungible token fever witnessed over the last few months is catching the copyright management agency's attention. One of them, located in Italy, has chosen a blockchain company to create its own NFTs. So SIAE expects to guarantee copyright protection with NFTs for the next 139 years. According to the announcement, oh, I can't even pronounce that, Societa Italiana Degli Attori, uh, again, 
SIAE, <laughs> founded in 1883, picked Algorand to manage the rights of over 95,000 authors in the form of non-fungible tokens. Both parties have been working on the project since 2019. So there you go, this has been going for a while. In a first instance, 4 million NFTs were created to represent select SIAE authors' rights. Per SIAE, SI, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, by digitalizing these rights on blockchain technology, authors could ensure that their copyrights are globally protected on a transparent and open infrastructure. I reckon this is going to be big. I just get the feeling this is, you know, it's smart thinking, you know, that they were doing this or organizing this back in 2019 and now 2021 with this whole NFT craze is kicking off. This is an NFT where I can see real value in, like, you know, this has got something about it. Again, I've spoken about this before. I don't know art. I'm, I can look at something and I can think it's nice and it looks great but I've got no idea what it's actually worth. I don't know art in those terms. These kind of NFTs, this this is, you know, it's not about looking at something and going, I think it's pretty and it may be worth money. This is something that will actually hold value. Uh, and again, yeah, love this and our grand. I can't believe they were starting this back in 2019 because it really feels like NFTs have only kind of really become a thing of late although we had crypto kitties back in 2017 so yeah i suppose it's not like they haven't been around all right last but not least elon musk this dude is so clever so it was down here all right so this week the manufacturer began accepting bitcoin so that's uh tesla as payment for its cars delivering on a promise made in early february by uh elon musk underscoring his faith in the currency must declare that on wednesday that tesla would keep rather than convert any bitcoin it earns from car sales <sighs> he's such a smart dude he really is just he's up there he understands what is happening at the moment and you know not that long ago we're talking like 12 months ago he really was somewhat skeptical on bitcoin uh bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general and now he's just got tweet after tweet coming out about you know uh don't deny DeFi and things like that uh you know talking about bitcoin putting the bitcoin handle in his bio and all the rest of it this is really really smart thinking by him number one i don't think too many people are going to buy uh teslas with bitcoin i definitely think there will be some that will and yeah, so I imagine he's going to simply hold on to those Bitcoin. I don't think he's going to sell too many. I think he will sell some, at you know, on occasions. Like if Bitcoin goes to half a million dollars, he's probably going to sell a few. That's just the way it is. He's going to, you know, take some of those profits and, you know, develop more cars and, you know, do whatever it is he's going to do. He's absolutely going to sell some of them. You don't simply buy something and hold on to it forever. What good is it to you if you just hold on to it? unless you've got it in something else you know making you money again that tweet that he put out you know don't deny DeFi. so maybe he's putting some of that bitcoin to work in DeFi. then i can imagine that he will never sell those bitcoin but otherwise i can imagine that you know when it's really up he's probably going to sell some and he's going to take that money and reinvest it into other things because bitcoin's not going to be outperforming everything else when it goes into its next bear market which it likely will or if it gets to a point where it just starts to level out, eventually it will lose uh, at least some of its vol volatility. Nothing just levels out and then stays the same, basically, uh, you know, particularly because of the way our fiat system works. Uh, it could level out and then just Bitcoin is worth Bitcoin and then we go off Satoshi's after that. But yeah, smart thinking by this man. I think he's going to have an extreme amount of Bitcoin uh, in the future i mean they got 1.5 billion dollars worth it's now suddenly worth i don't know i think well it's gone down so he bought 1.5 billion not that long ago it only took him around about a month or two that 1.5 billion dollars worth of bitcoin was worth 2.2 billion so he you know nearly doubled his money in a very short amount of time and then there was all the people saying, oh, because it's going down, it was worth 62,000. Now it's only worth 52, sorry, yeah, 62,000. And then it was worth, you know, 56,000. They were saying, he's going to have to sell his Bitcoin. No, he doesn't. He knows what's coming. The price isn't going to drop that much lower. And even if it does, he simply has to hold for around about four years and it'll be worth 
infinitely more than what it is now. That's just the way it's played out. And it doesn't appear that anything's changed yet. So until it does change, until something happens that makes it different, he's probably done all the research. He's looked into cryptocurrencies like everybody else does and realizes, right, there's a four year cycle. This thing just continually goes up other than when it retraces in the bear cycle. But if you hold four years time, no matter what price you bought in at, it's generally gone much higher, nearly two to three times higher, if not more. So yeah, very, very smart man and very, very interesting. All right, just a quick one, Saturday, got to get out there and enjoy life. It's not all about cryptocurrencies, although most of my life, no, I won't say most of my life, most of my life is still based around my job uh, and then my family. But, you know, whatever spare time I generally have is pretty much all cryptocurrencies. But I do like to use a bit of my spare time to get out and enjoy the sunshine and all the rest of it. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. If you're on that game train, congratulations to you. You're doing extremely well. And I'll see you next time.